by Tash Francesca, our speaker for this morning. So Tash is a dedicated, lifelong yoga philosophy, decolonization, and movement student. Notice it's student, not teacher, y'all, even though she teaches many, many people across many different spaces and shares her wisdom in lots of forms. She uses motion, stillness, and an earth-based understanding to realize and embody a human experience from a place of compassion and curiosity. This foundation seeps into her teachings and into her ways of knowing and being and all her, way, her waking hours. So, in her words, which you'll hear directly in a moment, but movement is not only intuitive to the physical body, but is also foundational to understanding the macro and down to the micro. Tasha's talk this morning will explore how movement through migration shows up in her Filipino body then and now and what is possible for the future. I had an opportunity to explore some of Tasha's offerings very early on in the pandemic. I was still living in Vancouver and she had offered some, some things um, virtually and so we got to connect in the ether that way. And uh, I came to, to that class just hoping to move my body that felt stuck and rigid and I left feeling far more connected to self, um, to my way of being, and to my ancestry. And I've just been so stoked to have Tash here with Creative Morning for over a year now. So finally, finally, warm welcome to Tash. Let's give it up for her. I'm really happy that I wrote down what I have to say, because holy shit. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Tash Francesca. My pronouns are she and her, and I am a half Ilupano and a half Ilupano settler here in Treaty 13 territory. I consider myself a chosen caregiver, a storyteller, and a deep listener. If you're like, what is that? <laughs> um, on my resume, you might see yoga teacher, educator, Pilates teacher, all of these other things. Um, I don't necessarily consider myself a public speaker, but I do consider myself a writer. Mm -hmm. So I wrote something to read to you so that I wouldn't go on tangents. <laughs> is that okay? It sure is. Yes. Okay. Okay, so... My mother was my very first movement teacher. Mm -hmm. Even before I was born, she moved from her mama's house to my mama's papa's house. She knew that she needed to keep it moving, so she asked her aunt to help her come to Canada through the caregiver program in the 90s that allowed many, many, the mass migration of many Filipino bodies to travel to Toronto and otherwise. So before I was three, she moved across land, across lakes, oceans, and eventually landed here, and specifically in Pickering as a caregiver. Her love for reading moved me to lie to her face and say that I too like to read. So she sent me books that I didn't have a home for because my Lola and I slept on the floor in Elsie's bedroom. I'm not going to cry the whole time, but I might most of it. <laughs> Eventually, I was 6, turning 7, and she was 28. We reunited, and even though the space, within, the space was now only within arm's reach, the silence between us was striking, overwhelming. She moved all the way over here for me, and why couldn't and wouldn't I appreciate her actions and reciprocity? And I move away from her because I don't know this woman. The silence between us became the silence within me, and the quieter I got, the louder she was. Not only was the space between us shrinking, but me too, me too, until I became absolutely nothing. Nothing to me, nothing to her, nothing to anybody. The accordion of space between mother and daughter, closing and opening, closing and opening, calcifying the foundation of how I eventually understood myself. So I looked for relationships that kept me small, that kept that self-hatred and shame moving. I didn't even know why I hated myself, but my mama did, so I did too. 
Movement found itself in my body first, sexually. I realized the power of my hips, my pussy, the sound of my voice. I moved into completion. I could be any girl that you want, except for myself. Isn't that a lyric to a Drake song somewhere? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and that worked for a while. And yeah, I moved my body too at the gym and yoga, but mostly to, my, to punish my brown skin, my thighs, my lack of height, my belly. I understood my body to be something to be used, but not necessarily loved. For a really long time, I did believe that. Everything was a form of punishment, and I took pride in how hard my body worked but felt disappointed that it stood out, bigger than everyone else's. Movement didn't feel good in my body, no matter what I did. Moving my body felt very vulnerable, and I spent my whole life building a heart protective barrier because nobody else would. In fact, my mother has not stopped moving. One time we went to the beach, and we set up, we had our blankets, we had our towels, and, uh, and then she's lying down, and she said, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said nothing. We just enjoy each other's company as best we can. She moves quickly, efficiently, as a way to ensure there's always a spot for her. A spot where she can offer care. And if she kept moving, there would always be room for her. But in her frantic pace, she forgot about me. She forgot that she didn't need to work for my love. In fact, I really want to give it to her, I still do. Okay, I might cry the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's okay. I started doing Pilates, or at least that's what she called it. She encouraged us to push through to feel your strength. And that's all you needed to make it to the other side. She called it healing, but let's call it spade a spade. It was trauma bonding. I integrated myself into a community of skinny white women with tattoos who called themselves misfits. And then I had the audacity to wonder why I didn't fit in. Growing up, assimilation meant not eating the synagogue that my parents dropped off at school for lunch. It meant having avocados in salads, not with milk, sugar, and crushed ice, which you all should try. <laughs> it meant singing, not singing karaoke because I barely even spoke. Anyways, so I did this energy change at the studio. Do you know what this is? Yeah, so it's when you exchange labor for your time and you get credits. So that's what you did. I've been taking classes at the studio for a few months, years. I honestly can't remember. I just know that it was a big part of my life. And they started selling teacher training, so with competition, I signed up. I mean, that even though I knew almost everyone that went there, I still felt like I had no business being here. Should I pause a sec? I'll keep going. Yeah. Can you still hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, with competition, I signed up for the teacher training. I mean that even though I almost knew, I knew almost everyone that went there, teachers and student alike, I still knew that I had no business being there, and during that training, I definitely felt it. Amber always made me feel like there was a bigger plan at play. The cosmos, the stars, Mercury, and ironically, never took credit for any impacts that she had. I will gladly admit, though, she did give me one gift through this training, and it's my voice. We spent a lot of time teaching movement to one another, and eventually to our friends, our clients, and the bigger community. And when you say, lift your hand to the ceiling, and a whole bunch of people do, and you do it again and again and again, the power of your voice becomes undeniable, and eventually, I use that power to tell her to fuck off. <laughs> I've been telling people to fuck off ever since. <laughs> Because of the pandemic and the global awareness of injustice to black and indigenous bodies that have come to the forefront of news, daily life, all wellness spaces now strive to be open, inclusive, trauma-informed, and at the same time still only talking to white people. Mm -hmm. Many studios are allowing one or two teachers of color to be on the roster, but aren't doing anything else to carve out space and accommodation for the needs of marginalized people. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wellness and movement is still a business, but being called the healing modality, and people of color are still at the front lines of teaching others how to take care, only to make the bottom line of, well, of white wellness studio owners. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. 
I put myself through many trainings, and do you think my mom gave me a set? No. I don't actually share with her my accomplishments because she truly doesn't get it, and it's honestly a bit more disappointing. I've had to process many things as a leader in spaces, and there aren't many people that I can turn to that will understand, that can hold space for the space holder. I don't want your sympathy, however, I want you to take action. I want you to show up and take care of yourself so that my aunties and my mom doesn't have to. I want you to revere and love and appreciate bodies of color beyond wondering what it can do. I want you to do that so my aunties, my uncles, my cousins can stay in the Philippines. Have you ever Googled the Philippines? Yeah, like Cebu or Coron or Pangasinan or Bicol, and then Googled Winnipeg. Like, you just wouldn't choose one for the other <laughs> one you could stay in the Philippines, and that's what I'd like for us to do. I'm not telling you to fuck off, don't worry, but I'm telling you to do better. Movement for you means movement for collective healing, movement for collective liberation. Movement in the form of migration put land and water between my mother and I, forever separating us. Deeply changing the formulation of my family units and the way I continue to move around in the world. Not eating anyone, but also wanting so bad for someone to say, are you okay? And you mean it. For some, movement is not a choice. It's deeply embedded in the survival of this life and many others. For some, the price of movement is $30 plus tax. For me, it was a one-way ticket from an island to four seasons, and it cost me more than I can imagine. Movement for me now is a form of forgiveness. Forgiveness for ever thinking that my body was someone or anyone else's pleasure except for my own. Forgiveness for hating myself for not fitting into the box of whiteness, spilling over the edges, and being more than what you can handle and believing that that was my fault. That's your business, I do not mind. Forgiveness for thinking that I can make her love me, but realizing that it was her that needed love too. What's possible for this Filipino body? Anything at all, honey. Please <laughs> 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 take a second to ground yourself in place. And with your eyes closed, Starting to tune in, starting to tune into the sound or the feeling of your own heartbeat. Trying not to deny the voice, that breath, any sound that you might be making. resistance and see if you can soften that. Follow the sound all the way until it's completion. silence might be overwhelming, let it be. And then let it exist beyond the space and deep within you. Follow that feeling of emptiness all the way to the pit of your stomach and beyond. And if you get any deeper than that, you might start to tap into that intuitive voice that lays dormant, waiting for all of the stories to pass. Can you listen to it? And as you start to listen to it, can you feel that voice in the pit of your stomach rising up towards your throat? If 
if you feel open to it, I'd love to hear your voice as you exhale. So take a big inhale here. Whatever sound comes out, let it out. <laughs> I tricked you, it's gonna be a sustained sound. So continue to inhale, and as you exhale, that voice continues to pour out of you. For me, it might sound like a hum. So, how does one continually fill up their cup yeah. during processes like these? Because yeah. like, there's a lot of, you know, unloading. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, how does one kind of make sure that they're taking care of themselves? I would say, honestly, for me, it's always starting my day off in a nice way and ending my day off in a good way and asking for help as much as I can. And in the beginning, I think it's hard because there's this idea that we have to do everything, but I genuinely don't want to exist in that world. I want to like, I want to get, I want people to pick me up at my house. Yeah, I'll tell you my address. You know, send me Uber Eats. Like, I will do that. You know, I just don't think, I, I, I don't want to romanticize this idea that I have to do everything. Instead, I want to romanticize and really exist where we rely on one another. Yeah. 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 I think that, that, that's huge. Yeah. Like, Growing up, I like, always hear the expression, right? Like, it takes a village. Yeah. You know, we're in this in community, but then we get up there as adults. Adults, like, we're never really truly adults. Um, <laughs> but, like, as adults, and we're like, no, you got to do everything by yourself. And throughout this journey, right? Yeah. And thank you so much. Like, you're showing us that we can ask people for help. We and, have to. Even, like, even ask sound for help. Yeah. Because, obviously, it's done so much yeah. for us, you know. Um, what was like your first, I guess, sound experience like and how did you first react to it and then also kind of yeah. come back into being, I guess, like, feeling okay? Again? Sound, well, in terms of sound, I actually hated it. Okay. I didn't know how to sit still. So I think I did a yoga nidra with my teacher at Taryn Diamond and Kiko and my leg was like shaking. Mm. Oh, actually, I did this, like, kundalini gong um, uh, session, and my leg was shaking, and my body, like, really hates stillness. Mm -hmm. It used to. I love it a lot now. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, so I think my first was that, and then I started to teach more like pranayama and meditation, and there's only so many ways you can tell people to stop thinking mm -hmm. without tapping into something. Again, it's that idea of asking for help. I don't want to be the person that you turn to for everything. I want you to be able to access tools. So then that way, like I think that there's a wisdom that the body knows in relationship to sound mm -hmm. that I think we all feel. Like how do you know how to start dancing? Mm -hmm. How do you know when something is really insane in a movie? Like how do you know when to look behind a pillow? Mm -hmm. It's because the music di dictates that and because our body can understand that. But I think that we think we can control things through our thoughts and our ideas and those things, but I don't think that that's necessarily true. Tasha mentioned the stillness piece, and I think that probably a lot of people have that experience or the tension with stillness. Just yeah. can you share a little bit more about that? Just yeah. what it's been like for you, and um, yeah, like how that also might influence kind of some of your creative work or mm -hmm. your journey. Yeah. yeah, I just find that in mo in movement, there's like stories that arise when you're moving, mm -hmm. but when you're still, you're kind of forced with this with like the cat like all of the things, the catalog of things that you feel and think. And anyone can fake it and be okay, but I think if you're really chill with being with yourself in stillness with nothing else, that's like being really being with yourself. So I think for me in terms of my practice, I would say I do it through my teacher again. Like during the pandemic, she did a lot of chanting. So she did. We did daily chanting every every day for three weeks, and then three months, and then she stopped, and then we did it for another three months. And I think that again, like stillness is it's not something like turning the lights on and off. You have to actively work towards being okay with that. Um, so I guess I think it's different for everybody. Any last last questions? Oh, in the back. <laughs> um, do you have any advice or like what are the questions you ask yourself as you like navigate spaces? Uh huh. Um, just, like learn more about people that are in those spaces. I don't think I necessarily have questions anymore because I really trust myself. Mm -hmm. And so when shit happens and it doesn't feel good, I just leave. Mm -hmm. And I try my best to honor Nothing ever, f I, don't, I don't approach conversations or hard things as if we're in friction with one another. I approach things as if we are in collaboration, trying to find a solution that works for you and for me. So if I were to leave a situation because I didn't like it, that would cause friction for me. So I'd have to move in a way that feels honorable to this relationship and how can I maintain it. But also like... Not, and I also know that I don't need to tell everyone everything. Mm -hmm. So if I just don't feel good there, and then I don't want to leave, I'll tell you exactly what you need to know without lying. But you know, I gotta keep my peace. I ultimately, like you know, like I, I we've talked about this before. But so I I work for Good Space, and my manager, or my own, my the owner is Megan. She's always telling me like, what are you protecting? It's really important to have a boundary, but what are you protecting and what, what is that? And so having clarity of what it is that means a lot to you and what you're working towards is great. You, again, you don't need to tell anyone, but it's like being aware of that and saying no to this. What am I calling in and what am I making space for? So I think it's just putting myself in those situations where it's controlled effort then I can see what I can really do and then continue to do that until I don't have to ask those questions anymore. And I just move with grace because I know that if I can't do it, I have people that I can rely on that will come through, that will help me. And like, I don't, yeah. Does that help? Of course. Of course. There's one more here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, personally, I feel in the recent years, it's been uh, the movement itself has been overwhelming for a person from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. Yeah. Do you think you can still find stillness in moment, like mm -hmm. a flow state, mm -hmm. or do you need to actually have like a separate time of stillness without moving? That's a great question, and I think that's your homework. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> that's your homework. I think you got to find that. Because I, I, I think I can answer it too, but it, it'll look different for me. Yeah. Is that helpful or annoying? 
What's the reason? Because uh, I know it, it's still uh, difficult for me to you know find that flow state where you're unconsciously mm -hmm. not uh, uh, being in touch with your surrounding, but being in touch with your work and going on forever without time constraint. Yeah. But I also feel a little bit of peace and stillness where I don't move and I just sit down and meditate for yeah. a lot of time. But how do I find like a balance or where do I move yeah. closer to find better stillness? Yeah, I, now that you now that you reframe your question, I really think you need to do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that'll help you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One more. Hi. Um, I wonder if your response will be a similar, similar one. Um, first, thank you for sharing your words and story. I saw so much of different versions of my experience in your words, so just thank you. And it's so inspiring to see where you are now and the way you share, knowing where I am on my journey, and perhaps it's, it's further back. And so you talked about the power of asking people to raise their hands to the sky and then having them do that, and I think one of those pivotal moments where you found strength in your voice. And you talked about self-trust, and I'm curious if there are other moments or things you found on your journey that helped you build the strength you have now in your voice and your boundaries and your trust, mm -hmm. or just other things, because I think I'm on that journey, and so partly I imagine it's my own homework, but I'm also curious if there's things that have worked for you, whether yeah. it was moments where you're like, okay, I trust my voice now, I trust my truth now, I trust myself now, yeah. essentially. I think that I exist in a place where I wear many different hats, and I, 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 and so, I have to just consider what hat am I wearing and ultimately like where do I want to go in life in general so I think it sort of just depends and um, and like yeah am I, am I in a space where I'm cultivating and creating community and encouraging others to step into their own role because in that place then the learning is different than when I'm trying to cultivate my own voice and so it's it's hard to say especially because and I, and I think that we should all consider ourselves like a multitude of identities too because we can apply one strategy in one part of our life but it's not going to translate in the other part and that connection that we have and hoping that it will is what causes us suffering. But if you recognize that something might work, something might not work, but then also recognizing that none of that has anything to do with your inherent ability, it's just situational. You know, like it's, it's, yeah, you got homework too. <laughs> <laughs> you all do. You all yeah. got homework. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Any more homework you want to dole out? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Finally, we have next week. Um, so, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Is there, a, a, I know you mentioned that you are teaching. Um, where is that again? And how yeah, do you so I, I teach at uh, uh, Good Space and I also co manage this space and it's at okay. Clean and Defran. And I also teach at Union, which is at Ossington and Bloor. I currently um, am a mentor uh, for Solga. Have you all heard of Solga? It's an organization that um, puts together teachers of color and students of color to create um, events and activities so that we can cultivate a feeling of community. Right now, we're doing our mentorship program. And I do things on the internet too, so I think that's the one. Pop it up, pop it up. I post things on the internet like all the time. Um, yeah. Right up there, guys. But yeah, one more time, y'all.